Good morning. Today is the third of Av. We're in page Tet. Vinei im I think. Oh no no we're im kolze. We're in page Chet at the bottom. Today is the third of Av, the twenty-first uh, of July. We're in that too. עם כל זה אנו רואים לפעמים בשעה שדורש את המידו באיזה עניין נופלים לו לרב המצאות חדשות יותר. So now this is where the parable becomes more connected to our topic. It says in the middle of teaching a rav who has a talmid muvhak who is somebody who is really taking things out of him is a, real, is a real vessel to receive everything it causes the rav to have new insight המצאות חדשות כוח ההמצאה is חוכמה, the power of innovation. He has a new innovation in what he's teaching. <coughs> now he's going to give us three reasons why this happens, two of which we're going to say are uh, relatively, relatively uh, accidental. The third one <coughs> is, is even more accidental, but it's actually the strongest one. Okay, let's see what they are. Firstly, why? Why does this happen? So he says, uh, uh, first of all, he gives a, an example. Okay, what could be something new? Uh, this is much loftier than what he had prepared. It could be a, a stronger question to start with on the topic. He's like, he's learning something, and how do, how do we start? We start by asking questions. And how is it? So there's a better question to ask. Or a better response. Terutz yoter nifla. Mashelo iskil ze mikodem b'shash tesider tadush b'machshavto. And he wasn't able to attain this level of understanding before when he was preparing the lesson. V'umikam atamim. There's a few reasons for the, for this. The rishon. Mashu b'machshavah niskirim otiot b'skirah achat. V'afilu biruhu shemeharher b'otiot ech ledaber. Im kol ze enam echulakim otiot kokach mo b'divur b'fal mamash. He says, when you're preparing a shear, then you are surveying everything with your thought. You're surveying the whole uh, progression, the whole lesson plan with your thought. And when it's with your thought, it's not, it doesn't go into detail. Thought cannot go into the same detail that speech can. Because speech brings it down even further. And the detail, the division into actual words that the person says, they cause what we call clarification. And that's what the sages mean when they give us a principle of learning the Torah, that the general requires the, the particular. And the general is the thought, and the particular is the speech. And because of that, what do we say about that? Just as understanding clarifies wisdom, because again, wisdom is the innovation. It's the general principle. It's the idea. And Bina is already constructing it into an edifice, into a whole thing, into a whole structure. When the person, so here he's saying, what's the underlying reason here? That the person, because he's looking at it from a bird's eye view, when he's preparing the lesson, he can fool himself. He can make a mistake. And he doesn't, because he's, he, it's hard to go into the details. That's why, when you really are going to give um, a, a, a speech, if you're going to be giving it hundreds of times, not if you're going to give it once. People, nobody has time to do it if you do it once. But if you're going to be giving it hundreds of times, which many times happens to professional speakers, uh, or somebody promoting his book, or something like that, they'll give the same speech, like 50, 100 times. So what they do is, you have to prepare in front of at least one person. And you prepare with actually standing at a podium and speaking. Or they say that theoretically in debates they prepare people this way. But whatever it is, you have to actually go through the motions. And then you pick up on the mistakes. Today we have something better, by the way. Video. That's also a possibility. You can videotape yourself and then watch it. 
But we have something better. Even when you're writing, you can transcribe what you're saying into speech and then have it played back to you. And then you're like the audience and you're listening to yourself to what you wrote, but a machine's going to be speaking and you pick up very quickly on where your thought gets stuck. Like what doesn't flow here. Logically, not just uh, in terms of style. Logically, the, the, the train of thought is not complete. And so you go back and you rewrite it. And you, and you fill in the gaps. And, th- and that's probably the most important part of speaking well. It turns out that you don't have to do this too much. You need to do it for like 10, 15 years. If you do it for 10, 15 years, eventually um, you make this into a habit when you speak to follow. You've already learned, like your mind has already learned what makes for a good flow. And what will people be able to follow logically? And that's very important. You have, to, you have to get to that level. I mean, if you're, again, if you're teaching, you have to get to that level where you can instinct, instinctually, instinctively. Con- instinctively connect the thoughts in your, in your train of thought, in your train of speech, the right way so that the person follows it, so that it makes some sense. To make a lot of sense is difficult. That already is, requires you to have thought it through many times. But there are some people who are geniuses and are able to do this almost on the fly, even without preparing very much. But really, in the end, everybody who speaks eloquently in a logical manner has spent many, many, many years speaking what they wrote. They have to. There's no other way to do it. Anyway, and so what he's saying is, And therefore the Torah tells us uh, that uh, Bruria taught us that you have to speak what you learn. Bruria, Rabbi Meir's wife, she was the one who said this. That, and, and it's very, very shy, because she's malchus, she's the uh, power of speech, so, uh, like all women. So she says, if you, if, you, if you don't practice it, if you don't actually utter the words that you're reading and thinking about, then it will not give you life. And this is also true, like we said, when you're even not preparing for a speech, when all you're doing is learning to yourself. You have to utter the words. All the more so when he's speaking to someone else. Even though he, he, he took into account who the audience is going to be and their limitations and understanding what he's saying. And he took that into account and he built his lesson that way so that they wouldn't understand fully. Still, it's not the same when you actually see the face of your audience. It's something entirely different. What happens then? It and now, the pnimius of the Ratzon, what's the pnimius of the Ratzon? The, the inner aspect of the Ratzon. That I had a purpose in, what I, I, in, what, in, in wanting to teach this. What was the purpose? I wanted you to understand it. <laughs> that was the whole point. This is why. That's why I. Uh, that's why we're here. Okay. What's the what? What's the other point? Uh, no, I know that's people that they sit down to learn in Chavrusa, and one's not teaching the other. And I told you once the story about the Or, or Sameach and uh, and uh, the Or Sameach and who was the other one that he was with? I don't remember. I don't remember. He's not so famous because he didn't write a book. <laughs> the Orsamech and the Rambam. I'm not talking about the Orsamech and the, and, the, and the Chumash, which is also upset, but I'm talking about the Orsamech and the Rambam. So he says that whoever his Chavrusa was, when they were young, he understood that one has to be the teacher and one has to be the student. It doesn't matter that we're the same. We're the same level. But we have to act that way. Because if we don't act that way, we're not going to understand it fully. It has to be the one is explaining, 
The other one is questioning and saying, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand. That I don't understand is more valuable than anything in your life. Because you have to work hard. You also have to get over your... <laughs> your you know, not just inhibitions, but your ego. What do you mean? This, how could you not understand it? You, know, you have to really explain it. And when you try to really explain it, that's when you, that's when you break through a lot of barriers in the mind that don't allow you to fully understand even what you're thinking about. So you have to learn in a chavrusa. O chavruta, o mituta. And the chavrusa has to be, the, having a studying partner means not that we're studying together, but that one is the teacher and one is the student. And then they used to switch. Every once in a while they used to switch. Because we're really both the same level. It's just that it's the right way to, to study together. So the point is to understand. So if two people are just gathering to go over a text, to read the text and let's finish it, it's very nice. It's good to finish texts, uh, to finish many books, but the real purpose is to understand. And so if you don't do this, something's lacking. So when he sees the face of the one who's receiving from him, his student, והרב שמבין זה מוכרח להוסיף לו דברים וברורים מה שלא הבינה מקודם, מה שלא הכינה מקודם במחשבתו. So he's forced by the lack of understanding of his pupil to bring down new innovations, new explanations, new ways of approaching the topic. או להעתיק לו הדברים מלשון ללשון, or at least to translate it for him in easier language. ועל ידי זה נתעורר אצל הרב בעצמו פנימיותו של השכל היולי הקבוע בנפש המשכלת. And then that awakens what we call the מוח הסתימה, the כוח המשכיל, the נפש המשכלת. Then that awakens the very power of intellect in the person. ולכן נתעורר אצלו נעלמות על ידי רוח חוזר הנ"ל. And things that were until now concealed, it could be that they were also concealed by his lack of memory, he didn't remember them. They're suddenly awakened. And, and, and it's, very, um, it's very, what do you call it, um, um, it's, it's very uh, embarrassing to stand before your student and not know what to answer. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's even more embarrassing to come and say, you know what, you're right. I didn't explain this right. I have to explain it again from a different approach. This means something else than what I thought at first. That is not comfortable for any teacher. Why? Because yeah, it's an ego I'm thing. Speaking, you know, you suddenly can't. But who? But what happened? I, I said something that's not perfectly right. It's not correct. It's wrong. It's downright stupid. <laughs> many, many levels to it, and I have to now correct it. So that's difficult for anyone. Anyway, that's that's the first reason. Uvemeti <laughs> karatam. So, so we had here two reasons. One is, let's just recap. The first reason was because when you speak, it's different when, than when you think. That's first of all. Second reason is because the student himself, w- by not understanding, awakens in you the need to innovate. But now, he says there's something even more than this. Even though this is more accidental, it'll seem to us like a sgula, as some kind of statement, like uh, take it or leave it. Okay? So... The real reason is, uh, Sorry, I missed this. Uh, why is it that new innovations come when you actually have a student? Because there is a principle from Sefer Yitzira that the end is in wedged in the beginning. What does that mean here? That... Meaning the point of all the innovation was in the end to give it to a student. And you've reached the end. So the end is in wedged in the beginning, not the same beginning, but new beginnings. Hatchalot. And hatchala is a big deal in Hasidut. You don't see this by the Rabbein. The Rabbein, the Rabbein don't use this language in their writing. But they apparently used it all the time Orally. Something that has a hatchala. What is something that has a hatchala? Something that comes all the way down from the tip of the crown. That's something that has an hatchala. Everything that's in the, in the middle is not called an hatchala. It's called a continuation. 
An atchala is a true innovation. For instance, every Jewish soul is, has a atchala. What do I mean by that? It's a truly new innovation. Everyone. It's something that had to come from the tip of the crown. What we call chelik boresh and asan ivra. A part of the creator that became a creation. A horse doesn't. A horse can be a continuation. The soul of the horse, the animal soul of the horse, can be just another part of the fathers, of the, of, of the stallion that they came from. And, or the mare, it doesn't matter. But it's just a continuation. There's nothing new about it. Okay, so that, that we'll, we'll finish with this. That's that's the end of it. Sof ma'asev ma'achshavat chila. That when you come to the end, it returns you back to a new beginning. Because the purpose of every thought is to be culminated by being taught. Okay, and we'll end here. So we finished two paragraphs out of the uh, out of this, and hopefully next week we'll finish the next two paragraphs. And then hopefully we'll get back into the parable and its meaning. Before you go.